I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. One day, I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. Super play from that spring, oh three, and he held it down solo. Better ask about him. G, have you sitting so high? A sigma on a mission. Shorty, he's never slipping. Got sigma dumb and vision. Ready to keep it rolling. Ready to keep it slowing. Ready to show you fools how he keeps it, keeps it going. P, B, S. When Kappa's eye started in 79, it was a mostly freshman nine, and by they had been unsuccessful with a lot of lines, and they only had brought Cliff. Lubin over so at that time most of them were getting ready to graduate so if they really didn't put any people on at that time the chapter would have been extinct so I, we very much remember sometimes being on like well if they don't take us over they're not going to have a chapter so I think that's one thing that we knew the chapter was going to be ours more or less to run with Cliff when mm -hmm. when we went over that made it special and I, I if you wearing that I ain't your big brother oh. <laughs> Yeah. Carry so Oh, I just disclaimed it, so I just thought you shut up. So it's just a joke. Calm down. Yeah. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Y'all can just walk in. and I think Chris talked about pledging well, is that it was very Afrocentric. Our, the founder of the chapter was um, Zachary Kinney, who was an Africana um, graduate student. So we were required to, um, you know, every night we had to know two articles about black people, recite and be prepared to talk about them. That was a part of our process, too, in addition to all the history. And really getting a well-grounded, um, knowing the 12-inch rule, Sigma Creed, and you wasn't going over until you knew the hymn that just wasn't wasn't optional but it was a special time because we knew we were kind of inheriting the chapter because they were last semester seniors about to graduate right.
So what time is it? It's well, show time in the house tonight, and it's our time to be right. Well, it's show time in the house tonight, and it's our time to be right. Well, it's show time in the house tonight, and it's our time to be being exposed to the fraternity at two totally different campuses uh, at Cornell and here now that I'm living in Syracuse. And I have to say that the relationship amongst the brothers, the problems that they face, the ideas that they come up with, the events that they put on are one and the same. You know, you would think that it would be diverse from campus to campus, but I'd have to say that the Brothers in Sigma that I've seen and been exposed to stick to the ideals of the fraternity. We're called the People's Fraternity. And we, look, we geared more so toward the concerns of others, more so than ourselves, like our brothers. I care a great deal about my brothers. I put my brother's life ahead of mine. You know what I'm saying? And you just have that feeling for others as well. And it's just there. It's something that's in the heart. That door. What door? The car door? Why? That's good. Y'all here, boy? Bird. Ready to get this money, baby? <laughs> nope. Stay in there. <laughs> that is our man. This is it. This is what they do. This is the type of stuff you see at an informational, and you be like, oh, what's the next line? I'll be saying that for the past <laughs> right? what, year and a half now. Real talk. I'm finally not a Neo anymore. You heard? Yo, that's I'm a grandpa now. Grandpa. Sigma, you know, I mean, at this point, it's been said so much, I guess you could say it's a cliche, it's a people's fraternity in the sense that we, I'm the same person other than, you know, some, you know, business aspects. I've grown a little bit, but I'm the same person socially that I was before I became a Sigma. I'm, I'm, I'm outgoing. I respect every individual. Every individual warrants my respect. And I see them, I greet them, I say, what's up, how are you? And anything else, any other opinion, is that's, that's, for, that's for something else. That's, that's, not, that's not what I'm worried about, at least. And the Sigmas totally upheld that, where they were just like, every individual got their respect regardless of what they stood for, what they did, that genuine surface respect, like, you're a good individual because you're here, and you know, I'm gonna respect you. And I didn't get that from other organizations. I felt like they were, you know, biased towards certain people. Um, it's, been, it's been good though. It feels good to be part of a brotherhood that actually feels like it's nothing but love in it. You know, like of course we all bump heads sometimes and that could be a little bit stressful. The business side of it could be stressful, but when we, when we successfully pull everything off and um, everything goes well, you know, it's just like, damn, like I realize again how much I really love these dudes. Um, I guess the honest reason you want, you want to surround yourself with men like yourself, uh, Sigma, men about business. Um, these were guys I, I looked up to on campus. I saw them doing the right things, getting involved in the right areas. Um, from what I remember, they were holding the think tanks. Um, Sigmas were genuinely the nicest people. You wouldn't know they wore letters if you know you weren't close to them. It was. It just seemed like a great fit. Something I wanted to be a part of. I am insane. Yeah. People need to know my SKA name. Yeah. It is Renaissance, my line name, Kutoka. And y'all need to know that I'm that Joker. Yeah. Oh, now, freshman, doing it big. Get me on the track and I'll put you in the
I, to this day, these are some of the best brothers that I've, um, I mean, brotherhood is one of those things that it's about relationship, and I have an undying relationship with these gentlemen. Roger was in one of my groomsmen, Bill came to my wedding, only person who didn't come, only two who didn't come is Ed, who we can't find, and Sam, who, um, I don't know why Sam. Well, no, we just we yeah, we, we just we, we relocated Sam, Sam. But, but yeah, but these are brothers who you know I was in his wedding. You know, these are lifelong relationships that we've established, and I treasure them. You know, I call it four ten eighty two. Every anniversary, I try to make sure that I call my line brothers just to say, you know, we did it. You know, we're still we're still here, and we and we did it. we did it together. When I was five years old, my dad said, son, don't ever talk to strangers. And that was the same year he taught me how to catch a baseball. Some years go by, I'm getting ready for high school. And my dad says, son, you stay away from those drugs, they're no good. Then he gave me my grandfather's watch. Four years later, I'm leaving for college. And I say, uh, Say, Dad, you have to stop hitting Mom. And I just hugged him as hard as I could. That was the only time I ever seen that man cry. Honestly, the show was the shit. I had mad fun. It was definitely nice. 